For all the talk and ads and debates, this primary election will come down to a relatively small number of the city's 8 million residents. Just over half are registered, and the last time there was both a Democratic and Republican primary, back in 2001, only about a quarter of those turned out. So what are the likely voters thinking? Joining me now are Jared Murphy, Executive Editor of City Limits, and Morgan Pekma, Editor-in-Chief of City and State. They're partners with us in a project called the Five Borough Ballot, a seven-month-long series of reports that revisited five locations, one in each of the city's boroughs, to see the election from the voters' perspective. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us again. It's thanks for you having us back. Here. So, you know, last time we were together, at the end of spring and beginning of summer, um, the people that you and your reporters were talking to didn't seem to know much about the candidates or their issues. Has that changed, Jared? Uh, last time I was in Brownsville, Brooklyn, it was changing. Uh, people were aware of the race. People uh, knew that there was something for them to be paying attention to. Most people told us that they typically don't make up their mind uh, of who to vote for until the very last week before the primary. There's something I heard a lot. Um, most people I talked to said they did intend to vote. Um, I think that you know, if I were to go back there today um, with all the coverage of recent polls and, you know, the publicized uh, CFB debates, I think we might find people kind of locking in on a candidate. Folks mm -hmm. were still searching, but at least they were aware there was something they were supposed to be searching for. How about in the Bronx? Uh, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, people aware of the race, um, generally not feeling engaged by politics in general, um, but generally intending to vote, um, but not aware yet of who they were going to vote for. Okay. For you? Well, I think there's no doubt about it that the debates and the saturation of the airwaves by television commercials have made a difference. In Bayside, Queens, we found voters who had really noticed uh, Bill de Blasio's commercials with his son. Uh, those, I think, really kind of uh, broke through the noise. And we have seen a heightened awareness of the candidates, but at the same time, as you pointed out, the, the majority of people still feel disengaged and will not show up at the polls on Election how, Day. How about on the Upper West Side, which you're also covering? I mean, they, they tend to be knowledgeable. Yeah, and we've actually seen a shift. Uh, for instance, the, the manager of the, uh, the diner that we've been covering, Artie's, uh, initially started off this race as a Bill Thompson supporter, and he's been won over to Bill de Blasio's side. Uh, we saw initially there's some interest in Anthony Weiner that's completely dissipated. Mm -hmm. So there, we have noticed uh, a, a movement uh, throughout this election. In Staten Island? Uh, Staten Island, you know, certainly there's there's been a, a great awareness of, of Christine Quinn's candidacy, not so much Bill Thompson's. Uh, you know, the, the candidates are registering now that they've gotten a, a good chance to be in, in the public eye, but there's not a great deal of enthusiasm really anywhere. Okay. And what about the issues that the people are talking about? Um, what are they? What, what really concerns them? Um, there, there, it depends on kind of the, the news cycle. I mean, certainly when Stop and Frisk, uh, you know, emerged, uh, that was something that a lot of people were talking about. You still see public safety as a very important issue. Uh, the economy, this, this uh, sense of the tale of two cities that Bill de Blasio has really been pushing as his message, that resonates with a lot of people. Income inequality is uh, at the vanguard of, of a lot of people's thinking. And the people you talk to? Yeah, it's much more vague in general. It's about a feeling that government over the past 10 or 12 years in the city has been very removed from their lives, that the mayor doesn't understand what their lives are like, and just wanting someone who, what I hear over and over again, wanting someone who understands what life is like for them. And I think that ties into generally affordability, but it also bleeds into schools and other subjects too, a feeling like someone who speaks their language is who they want uh, to be mayor. And those issues that most concern them, have, have they changed over the seven-month period, or have they pretty much stayed the same? Same Pretty much stayed the same. Um, you know, it's public safety, it's affordability, a little bit about schools, um, and just a feeling that government has been disconnected from them. And, and let's talk a little bit about the horse race. Um, we're shooting on August 29th, and, and as both of you mentioned, Bill de Blasio seems to be surging in the polls. Is that reflected? Talk a little more, um, more detail. Is that reflected in the areas that you've been reporting in? Um, well, certainly Bill de Blasio had virtually no name recognition when this race started. Now people do know of him. As I said, that, that commercial with his son Dante really resonated with people. And just anecdotally, I was at a press conference that Bill de Blasio held yesterday in downtown Brooklyn, and people were just stopping on the street and cheering his message of taxing the wealthy at a higher level to pay for a universal pre-K. And we have seen some excitement around that message, and that's kind of been the first real excitement of this campaign. Yeah. I didn't see people locking onto de Blasio per se, but in Brownsville, which is a majority black neighborhood, over the entire course of the project, I've seen a lack of enthusiasm for Bill Thompson um, repeatedly. 
people feeling as though they, they didn't feel an identity connection to him, they weren't excited by his candidacy. And I think we see in some of the recent poll numbers that's part of where de Blasio's strength comes from is he's pulling a, a large percentage of, of potential black voters in the city. That's reflected in Brownsville. Yeah, I get the sense that people are beginning to tune in, but they're not extremely energized. How do you think that's going to translate as far as turnout is concerned in the primary? Well, I think it's certainly been better than last time, uh, which was pathetic. Um, I don't know how it will compare to 2001. Um, I expect it will be, you know, there is a fair amount of energy. There is a lot of upset about Bloomberg and the term limits thing, and, you know, the race is drawing a lot of attention um, compared to four years ago. So I think it will be better. I don't know if it's going to solve the engagement uh, problem in the city. Morgan? I'm not sure I agree. Uh, I've heard some estimates that turnout could, could be actually down from previous levels. Uh, because there isn't one candidate who is energizing the electorate, uh, but that just goes to show that your readers, uh, your your viewers, should know that this is more important than ever because every vote is going to count, particularly in the Democratic primary where the the three front runners are, are neck and neck, depending upon how you look at the polls. And we could see you know a very small margin separating who are the candidates who get into the runoff. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.